You're very welcome. Back to Belfast, Terry. First of all, you've returned as patron of the Belfast Film Festival. Can you tell us a bit about how you got involved with the festival? Well, I've known Michelle Devlin for years, way back to the Short Strand and her family. And then when, um, you know, I was aware she was doing the West Belfast Festival and what was happening. And then as it evolved into the Belfast Festival, I met her several times and she was trying to get me to to come over with the film, but just the way it was spaced out. So we met in Toronto last year, which was September 2007. And she asked me about uh, participating. And then I guess it was a few months ago about being a patron and showing Reservation Road here. And I was more than willing to do that. I've been looking to do something kind of formal or structural to try and help film in Belfast and encourage people. Your latest feature film, Reservation Road, had its Irish premiere at the festival's launch last night. Can you tell us a bit about the film? Yeah, Reservation Road's an adaption of a book of the same name, a novel, um, and it tells the story of what happens to two families after a hit and run accident in which uh, a young boy's killed. It stars Joaquin Phoenix and Jennifer Connolly, who play the victim's family, and Mark Ruffalo and Mira Savino, who play the, the perpetrator, the hit and run driver, and his divorced wife. It's basically about, it's, it's about revenge and anger and demonizing the opposition. And it's also a thriller in that Joaquin becomes, his character becomes obsessed with tracking down the person who carried out this monstrous act against him. The idea for me was to take a smaller drama than I'm used to, take this probably the worst event that can happen to any human being, the loss of a child, and see what happens or explain what happens to American families in a very comfortable surrounding. It's set in Connecticut and um, Joaquin's family, Joaquin and Jennifer, are very comfortable in this very secure world and suddenly it's shattered. So that was the intention and part of the inspiration was that after 9-11, um, I noticed just how, first of all, America kind of fell apart, and secondly, how they had to demonize the opposition and everything in the world that was opposed to them in order to strike back. And, and that was the undercurrent of the, the movie I made. As you've already mentioned, the film is based on the novel by John Burnham Swartz. Do you think that the transition from page to screen is a difficult one? It depends on the book. This was particularly difficult because the story in the book is told through the head, in the heads of three of the, the participants. Joaquin's character, Mark's character, and Jennifer Connelly. Not so much Mira's character. Um, and therefore, the, the, an audience are reading a book. A book reader can get it sort of through their head, whereas I had to dramatize in real time and with dialogue what was taking place, so that's kind of hard. And, and people read books and they're extremely forgiving because they pick them up and put them down, maybe over the course of a few days or a few weeks. And so you get transitions and plot points that don't have to be as precise as when you have an audience locked in a, a dark room for two hours and, and they tend to really deconstruct everything. So those were the challenges of the movie. The film had a very fast-paced production with you receiving the script in June of 2006 and shooting beginning in September of the same year. Do you think that that's a reflection of how strong the script was or do you think that production companies are becoming increasingly demanding on producers and directors? No, no, it was a reflection of the story um, and serious actors wanting to do serious work and, and each wanting to work with each other. I mean, it was Joaquin got me involved, and then we, between us, persuaded Mark Ruffalo, and Jennifer Connelly was already on board, so it was very easy casting it, um, and that helped the speed of it. And we had a fairly wealthy um, stu mini studio company financing it. Even though they didn't give us a lot of money, they were there to produce it right away. You've been nominated for an Oscar twice before with Hotel Rwanda and In the Name of the Father and the cast of Reservation Road boasts a very strong track record in the awards field. Do you think that film awards are important for filmmakers? To market the kind of movies that 
Jim and I make and independent filmmakers make. We're forced into the situation where you have to release in the autumn or November, December to try and get critical acclaim so that it will build up a buzz that gets an audience there. It's a terrible system, but there's nothing you can do about it. You've worked with Joaquin Phoenix twice before, and you're known for using uh, the same actors in several of your productions, Daniel Day-Lewis being another obvious example. Do you think that this helps contribute to a, a good working relationship on set? Well, you, yeah. Well, you know, the da Daniel's thing was more Jim directing him from my left foot, and he worked with him three times, and so when I'm writing the script, uh, I was involved there. Joaquin I worked with three times because I did a, I rewrote a movie called Ladder 49 that he was the star of. And then, um, obviously in Hotel Rwanda, he did me a big favour by coming over and doing that part for free. And so we were looking to work together and, and he was into the script and that sort of induced me to do it. I mean, I do things, he's a fantastic actor and I do, I feel comfortable with people. It's just trying to get, you get all, you know, actors do movies for three months, producers do them for maybe a year, and writer directors do them for two years. So you're in a cycle where you're trying to catch up on people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I work with Helen Mirren, all of the cast of Hotel, of, of Hotel Rwanda, uh, Cheadle and Sophie, particularly, and Joaquin there, and now Joaquin, Jennifer Connelly, Mira Savino. Mark Ruffalo, um, Fanula Flash, I'd work with any of them again, they're all fantastic. Now Terry, you were born and raised in Belfast during what's considered to be the height of the Troubles. What was it like growing up during this time? Extraordinary, unique, scary, sad, uh, invigorating, maddening, all those things that, uh, that afterwards when you look back are quite bizarre, you know, particularly when you live in normal society, if you could call New York that, but peaceful society, you realize just how crazy it was. And yet, obviously, I made three movies about the Troubles now, so it sort of kick-started my career, and, and I've written a play about it, and written a lot of journalism. So I'm drawing on that and reflecting on it, and, and um, there's a couple of common themes that run through the movies. Obviously, f families and uh, in conflict. And then there, there, there's a kind of moral mantra um, that Jim Sheridan and I have, which, you know, there's that old uh, justification for violence or whatever, where the ends justifies the means. And we kind of took that and uh, looked at it and came to the conclusion that sometimes the means used so corrupt the end that it's no longer worth achieving. Um, and that became an underlying theme as well. So yeah, I mean, it's defined my life and half the province. You spent several years in prison during the 1970s. Do you think that this experience gave you an insight when you were writing In the Name of the Father and Some Other Son? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I drew on stories and experiences and um, and more people I'd met who'd been in English prisons for uh, for In the Name of the Father. But, the, the you know, obviously the maze or long cash as it was when I went into it and then they changed the name um, was quite a unique place because it was then it was the political status camp. Um, but I was there when they were building the H-blocks and knew what was ahead and then and knew many people who were in the blocks and knew that some of the hunger strikers, Patsy O'Hara in particular. Um, so yeah, that defined, uh, clearly those three years in prison defined a lot of what I was writing and a lot of, you know, my memories and uh, experiences for sure.